We used to call them flaps. I hate that word. I'm just saying. We called them curtains. Oh no, that's worse. I'll take Petals. a pedal. I don't know about flaps or <laughs> curtains. But to each their own. Hello. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. A little nervous. Why? I mean, yeah. vaginas. Vaginas. <laughs> so I am Beatrice Felio Espada. I am the founder and CEO of The Honey Pot Company. The Honey Pot is a plant-based feminine hygiene company that specializes in all things vagina. So what's it like to be a woman in the vagina business? It's so amazing at this time when women are starting to really stand up for themselves, stand up for their fellow sister. It's crazy because it's so simple, but women should ask themselves how do they feel about their vagina? Because if you can answer that question, that could probably lead you to why you are the human that you are. How often do you all think about what you put in and around and on your vagina? I mean, I think if I'm putting anything in or around or on my vagina, I'm thinking about it. So yeah. I would say daily. Yeah, yeah. daily. I would yeah. say I probably bring in the other half of the spectrum. I, it's not that I don't think about my vagina, but I think honestly my vagina is the final hurdle of like really truly loving myself. There's just a lot of stigma and shame around it for really? me personally. I think that has to do with like vaginas were always seen as very much for either God or for a husband. So here's the thing, since we're having this conversation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that we should leave this with a challenge. It's really important for you all to understand what she looks like, what she feels like. I challenge you to spend five minutes taking a mirror and looking at your vagina. She breathed. I did. I, guess. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> Understand all the parts. What does it look like? Some people just don't feel comfortable, but then five minutes like talking, just like in anything, is creating a relationship. That's it. That's what we're doing. Tomorrow we are meeting with a sketch artist. Oh, yes. yes we're going to describe what we think our vaginas look like. We're going to receive these sketches and then compare and contrast on our own to see if we actually knew our vagina, which I'm going to tell y'all now. I don't think I know mine that well. I feel like I could give a tour. Like I could walk it around. I don't know if I can describe it. <laughs> I'm gonna be the tour guy. <laughs> like literally. Yeah, I think aesthetically and like colors and stuff. Yeah. Tough. Yeah, like I mean. visually. Yeah. yeah. Can you hit us with some vagina facts? So a lot of people don't know that the vagina is actually inside the body. So when you hear a doctor say, you know, the vagina is a self-cleaning oven, mm -hmm. it is a self-cleaning oven, but that doesn't mean your vulva. That's a whole nother conversation. So what they're telling you is don't douche, don't put things inside of there. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if you do, then you can mess up your floor and you know create pH imbalances and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, yeah, we need a map early. Yeah. Did you know that your vagina makes hydrogen peroxide? No. no. So that's why sometimes you've just gone throughout your whole day and it has kind of a strong scent. Uh -huh. Not a stinky scent, but more like an ammonia type of a scent. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Just, it creates that so that it can create good bacteria so then the good bacteria can fight the bad bacteria. That's a great fact. Yeah, that's it's very cool. Fact. You shouldn't use washcloths. What? <laughs> Oh, should you be using? For the front or the back, you should use your hands. I did not yeah. know that. Me neither. Yeah. Washcloths hold bacteria, so it doesn't mm. matter how many times you wash that hoe, mm -hmm. it's not gonna be clean. Oh. Okay. <laughs> They're too rough for your vagina skin. If you're gonna use a washcloth, it should only be on the outside where your hair would be or, yeah. or where it is. Okay. But once you go inside your lips, you should only use your hands. That is wow. so good. That's so knowledge. funny and, because yeah. I'm always like using multiple washcloths in the shower. It's like one for my face, one for my bottom oh, area, yeah. and then a loofah yeah. from my body, but yeah. it's like, okay, well, I can cut one of those out. It's oh, just yeah. like the amount of elementary education that we're not given around our vagina. Exactly. Is ridiculous. It's yeah. ridiculous. Do you have any vagina life hacks for us? Yes. Taking a shower a couple of times a day. Mm. I love doing that. Are very important. And the reason for that is because you've gone through your whole entire day. If you do have issues around sensitivity and irritation or reoccurring infections or things like that, you can really help to minimize that by keeping yourself clean. And it's very important to do it at the beginning of your day and at the end of your day. The other life hack, when you're going to have sex, not everybody has time to go pee before they're going to get busy because sometimes that shit isn't planned. Mm -hmm. You should definitely go pee after you have sex. After, yeah. And that's with women or with men. It does not matter. Right after you go pee is when you're kind of just filtering out some of the things that may have entered. Also, very important to clean yourself after. Don't just lay in the wet spot. Get up. <laughs> I said it. You just want to lay sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you do. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. I feel empowered and ready to go. Yeah, yeah. here we go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary and I'm back with Ladylike today. And we're gonna be doing something really interesting. I'm actually pretty excited just because it's something new and different. I'd love to be a part of like breaking the stigma around vaginas and portraying vaginas in art. There are so many phallic symbols in art and I think we definitely don't have enough lady parts. I think we'll both be in for an experience and it might be easier for you than it is for me. I'm Jasmine. I'm Mary, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, not drunk this time. Good, it's good to see you sober. <laughs> we're here again. Yes, we are. And this time you get to see my other face. The other side of you. I need a little help. This is a group project. It is. It takes a village. It really <laughs> does. Usually... To, to describe vaginas. <laughs> so we are drawing, we, meaning you, <laughs> are going to draw my hoo-ha. I don't know how to start. I'm thinking in my head the angle will be just bird's eye view but flipped. So you are here. <laughs> okay. And I am here. I feel like my vagina is an orchid because look at me. I'm a long person. Therefore, the petals of my vagina are also long. I got some big ass thighs. Okay. So they're just going to be large in there and like round some stretch marks on there. There's, you know, two phases. Lips closed for me or lips wide open. Maybe let's go with lips wide open because it's more fun. There's more to play around with if you know what I mean. <laughs> Did that I is... just say too much? No. I feel vulnerable. No, I feel like no. a vulnerability hangover. No, vulnerable is good, man. Um, let's go to your lips. Not my face lips. No. Okay. Your vagina lips. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> A diamond, but with rounded edges. You see this? Okay. I think I have petite lips. There's not a lot of meat down there. It's like the inside of a rose. You know how roses have like layers and layers and layers? I'd say the smallest bit is sort of where we can start. Are they thick? Um, like a, a medium to thick. Okay. I would say my inner thighs are kind of circular. Okay. So that kind of shapes the eyebrow of the vagina, if you know what I mean. Cool, I just, my heart started beating a little faster. You got it, man. All right, so you have your lips, they're full. In my head, it's like a little bit darker, but then like the closer you get in, to the layers of the rose, the lighter it gets. How do the lips look? Pink, very pink. Pick a pink. My eye immediately went to the lavender. They're not lavender. <laughs> I haven't shaved in like, yeah, two and a half years. I post a lot of like lingerie and I model for some like swimsuits and shit. Yeah. So I don't have a load of hair. Is it waxed? Is it, mm -hmm. okay. I keep wanting to go down like this. <laughs> but we're not allowed. I don't know if I'm going too far in right now, but I feel like it's bumpy yeah, on the inside. Yeah, a little bit. And then when you get to the clitoris, I would move to like a, a shade lighter brown. Do you feel like your lips kind of go in more around that area? Notice how I uncrossed my legs. Yeah. I was like, let me feel it. So I think a part of my clitoris, there's like a darker brown area that's like longer and wider than the rest. We go down to where your hole is. There's the middle and here it is. You kind of got to search for that thing. You got it. I've seen a vagina or two Same. and I feel like it's bigger it's than bigger people's than. I've seen. Same. Usually you see the this kind of shape, the oval shape. Yeah. For the vagina. I think mine kind of is like this kind of shape, a little bodily shape. I think the biggest misconception I had about vaginas just for most of my life was that everyone sort of looked the same. I've recently realized that like there are so many different shapes and forms, just like people. This is called like the mound. I think mine is um, a little hooded. Like my eyes. Makes sense, right? It does. It's like pink on the inside. Yeah, like a rose. That's perfect. I love working with professionals. And then there's the hole. Let's make it a little bigger. Ooh. How big? <laughs> Bigger? <laughs> Make it bigger. You can see what this illustration is alluding to. So when yeah. she goes home and like goes and looks at herself, yeah, she can remember like what was said here. Do you feel good about your vagina? You know, I don't think I did for the longest time. Yeah, I have a lot of baggage around it. This feels correct. I feel like this is great. I'm kind of disappointed in myself for not knowing like more. Let me see your vagina. All right. It looks good. Right? Yeah. And now I'm going to take this sketch home and spend time with my vagina. Look at mine for five minutes with a mirror and see like how close it is to this actual sketch. Thanks, girl. Sounds good. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard that we were doing this, I was a little nervous, mainly because I haven't done a whole lot of vagina stuff. Even period stuff, I haven't really done a lot of period content. So that part of my body is sort of uncharted territory when it comes to the internet. I was a little nervous, but I was excited to lean into that. This voice in my head says, you're being silly. And this is a silly video. It's coming up for me now when I have to look at my own vagina, which tells me that I'm a lot more scared for this challenge than I initially thought. I'm about to look at my vagina. <laughs> Doing this in general is just like, what? 
I think I have a good understanding of, of what's going on, but now I'm gonna be sure. This morning, I'm about to take the mirror, take a look, try to compare it to the drawing that I described. And also just talk to her and affirm her and just hang out with her for a bit. Never done this before. We'll see what happens. I am the last to do this challenge. It's hypocritical, I know, because I produced the video. And then when it came time for me to actually sit down and spend time with that part of myself, I flaked. I cannot stress enough how much I've pushed this video off. I shot the pre-interviews and our interview with B. I think in early March, it's June. To be honest, I like, did my makeup, like it was a little fucking date, you know, put my little fairy lights on, like I was bringing someone home. I was just like, you know what? This is time for me and myself. Today's the day and I just showered. I'm just like trying to like make it into a moment. I'm gonna turn on my little salt lamp. We're doing this, my twinkle lights are on. You can do it, I support you. Look at your pussy the way you look at me. You're gonna have to move, dude. I just looked at my vagina. I don't know if this is the case for everyone, but my vagina's a f***ing flower. It's so pretty. I'm pretty sure I have a big ass vagina. Like, which makes sense, I'm a big ass person. And then talking to her was like, pretty cool. Looking at her while talking to her was really different than just like giving myself just general affirmations, but like looking at her and being like, you are worthy, you are intelligent, you are valuable. I did it. This try, that I made everyone else do, and I didn't do until the very last minute, definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things. I was dreading looking at my own vagina. And we just have to process that for a second. I had so much shame about my own private part that I was born with. You know, I had judged her from, you know, the top down angle. And to be honest, like no one really looks good from this angle. Also, I'm not gonna lie. I did not have a mirror. So I used a blush palette that I don't use. <laughs> I was just like exploring, looking at like the scenery, like going on a little tour. It was honestly kind of relaxing. I took my little mirror down there and I was like, oh, there she is. It doesn't look exactly like the sketch that I described. I wasn't too far off, that's a good thing. Some things could have been moved up, some colors could have been shifted, some shades and tones were a bit off. It was cool though, it was really cool to see that compare and contrast. I mean, it looked nothing like the drawing. I, I don't know really know what to tell you, it looks, like, it looks like a vagina. I don't know what I had imagined, like maybe some like the Kraken was down there, some kind of sea monster, but I didn't want to look at, but it just looked like a normal vagina. I'm 30. This should not be so revelatory to me. My drawing was kind of spot on in the sense that like, I had the logistics right. I can't believe I had never seen my clip before, face to face, I'm just gonna say it. She and I are, whew, we're friends. I'd never been like, yo, this is me. This is you, Clint. I didn't realize it would be as intimate as it was. I see it being something that I don't know, I can incorporate when I think about it. That is one part of my body that I understand, but I don't like take time and spend with. I think I'm gonna do that more often now. I like this. It's a free exercise that you can do with yourself to help you get to know yourself more. After this experience, I would probably describe my vagina as my best friend. To maintain friendships, you have to put in work. And I wanna make sure that I have a healthy relationship with my vagina, so putting in that extra work really did make me feel closer. Obviously, I've seen vaginas before because of my sexual preference. Seeing my own, like, this is just what someone else sees. They keep coming back, so it must be good, but... So this was all just... Um, affirming to me. Maybe this is just personal to me. Maybe everyone else in the world is like, no, I feel great about what I have. Great. But maybe you're watching this and you're like, yo, I don't know what I look like down there because I was raised where I was taught that what I own is dangerous and I shouldn't own it. F it. Check her out. I want to get to the place that B seems to be, you right. know, in, in regards to her relationship with her vagina. Like, that's the goal. Vagina bestie goals right there. We're not taught straight from the beginning to, like, be confident in yourself. We're taught, like, society is going to look at you and judge you, and that's how you be confident. So the moment we get that confidence or, like, look inside and at ourselves is the moment we take that power back. The vagina, 
I would wager to say, is kind of the epicenter of body shame. We regulate our vaginas just to a clinical space. Like that's the place that you go to check out, you take it to the gyno, you whip her out of the bag, show her to one person, and then put her back in. Shame sometimes hides behind excuses, and that has certainly been the experience for me. It's literally insane how powerful our vaginas are. I feel like if we were taught that from like a younger age, things would be a lot more powerful for us. Fostering that relationship as young as possible in a healthy way is really important. Wow, I'm just so grateful. This was cool. Regardless of what your genitalia is, you just need to figure out and feel yourself out and be comfortable with yourself 100% fully.